So good afternoon and welcome to uh, welcome back. I in this topic we are going to learn about uh, two distinct uh, uh, features we call traffic policing and um, traffic shaping. So what is this about? So network congestion often occurs in our network. So if the service traffic sent by users is not limited, then burst traffic of many users will lead to congestion. So the service traffic for the individual users, uh, for example, in campus networks, sometimes you get students who are torrenting, downloading from different servers. So they might end up utilizing a lot of bandwidth. Uh, so if we have several of such, then we are most likely going to have congestion in our network. So to make use of limited network resources and provide better services, we need to limit, we need to limit the user traffic. Mm -hmm. Now traffic policing and traffic uh, shaping limits traffic and the resources used by the traffic uh, by really monitoring the traffic. So we are going to see how. So this particular topic describes differences between traffic policing and traffic shaping, and also uh, shows us how to configure uh, each one of them. So by the end of this chapter, we are supposed to be familiar with features of traffic, traffic policing and shaping, and traffic shaping, and also master the configuration of traffic policing and traffic shaping. So we begin with traffic policing and traffic shaping. Uh -huh. So uh, in this particular scenario, in this particular scenario, as you can see, uh, we are connected to our ISP via a four megabit per second link. Eh? Uh, but in our internet, uh, we are connected to our gateway via 100 uh, megabits uh, per second. Uh, so if we don't control uh, what comes in, what comes in, then most likely we are going to encounter packet loss here. Because if we allow 100 megabits per second of data to come in, then obviously we're going to have congestion and packet loss at that particular point at the ISP. Eh? Mm -hmm. So generally, uh, that is what we are saying here. Now, to avoid that, to avoid that, we need to configure, we need to configure uh, traffic policing on the inbound interface of the enterprise egress router. Uh, so on this particular, this is the egress router, it's the one that is taking us to the ISP. So on this inbound interface, that is where we need to configure traffic policing uh, in order to limit the rate of total traffic. So we want to limit the rate of total traffic mm, and ensure minimum bandwidth for the various uh, traffic. Mm. Uh, so as you can see here, this is the explanation I was just giving. The tenant is uh, our, our network here. So the tenant's land bandwidth is far higher than the ISP ingress bandwidth. Uh, so as you can see by this call out here, uh, that is what we mean. So in this case, a large amount of traffic is discarded indiscriminately at the ISP ingress. So to sort out this problem, we need to configure traffic policing. Traffic policing, as we've said, is configured at the in, inbound interface uh, of the enterprise egress router. Now, in this case, we have uh, normal data in our network, we have voice data, and also we have video, uh, video data. So because we have a maximum of four megabits per second, that is actually 4,000 uh, kilobits per second. So we can divide uh, these three, uh, uh, we can divide uh, in different ratios, uh, this particular bandwidth, uh, because this is the maximum bandwidth actually. Uh, you remember the maximum bandwidth, the minimum bandwidth on the transmission path. So we need to divide uh, for each of these particular data type, depending on their priority. We divide 
this 400 kilobits per second. In this particular example, we are doing so uh, using this particular formula here. So we want to reserve uh, a bandwidth of 100 kilobits per second. Uh, so remember, we are configuring that here uh, to voice, then 2,000 kilobits per second to data, then 1,200 kilobits per second. Uh, uh, sorry, the other one was for video, so this one is for data. Mm. Now, if we do this, this is what then we refer to as traffic policing, traffic policing. So when we configure that, then what, what does that imply? Now, let's look at, uh, for example, voice. So this is voice data, the blue one. The yellow data is, uh, the yellow is data. Then uh, the green one is video. So when we set the maximum bandwidth for voice to 800, what that means is that anytime the voice data uh, goes beyond 800, anything else that comes in is the, uh, indiscriminately uh, discarded. So it will simply be discarded. So th that is what they're explaining here. For example, for video, we've set it to 2000 kilobits per second. So anytime data gets to video data, gets to uh, 200 kilobits per second, then the packets of which the rate is exceeded may be discarded or the priority of the packets. So we can do two things actually. We can either discard the packet or we change the priority. So, or the priority of the packets is reduced uh, before being forwarded. So those are the two things that you can do in traffic policing, in traffic policing. Now, how do we configure traffic policing? We configure traffic policing uh, by creating a traffic behavior. Then you give it a name. Then you go ahead and specify uh, what you call the car and the CIR, then you give it a value. So car is for, uh, car is committed, sorry, uh, committed access rate. Then we have uh, CIR, which is a term for committed uh, information. I think so, information rate, committed information rate. Uh, so uh, these are the commands that are used to configure traffic uh, policing, traffic policing. Uh, so similarly, uh, here we are creating a traffic behavior for the video uh, traffic and setting the CIR to 2000. And then here we are creating a traffic behavior for data and setting the committed information rate to 1200 uh, 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 kbps. So that's how we do it. Now, wh what is the advantage of traffic policing? As we've seen, anything that goes beyond the limit is simply dropped. So the advantage, different types of packets can be limited separately. Uh, so you just don't drop uh, uh, at the same rate for every type of packet. So we can be able to differentiate packets. Now the disadvantage with this one is that when link becomes idle, when the link becomes idle, bandwidth is wasted. Uh, so for example, if we don't have video data uh, and therefore the link uh, is, uh, has more space, voice can, can, cannot still go beyond 800 kilobits per second. So the bandwidth is really wasted. Uh, then again, discarded traffic may be retransmitted. Uh, uh. Okay. So the other concept is on traffic shaping. Uh, how different? How different is it from traffic policing? Uh, really, the same, same. Uh, uh, it's the same concept. The only difference between shaping and policing is that in traffic. Uh, in traffic shaping, the scenario is the same. So in traffic shaping, uh, when the data goes beyond the limit, when the data goes beyond the limit, uh, so for example here the data has been set to a limit of 1200 kilobits per second. When it goes beyond the limit, 
instead of discarding, we simply buffer the data. So we buffer the data, then we send the data when the link becomes idle. So that's the only difference between policing and shaping. So in shaping, we have a buffer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so we don't, we don't discard. We don't discard the packets. We simply put them on a buffer. Then when the link uh, uh, becomes idle, then we can, we can send out whatever we, we, we had saved. Mm. So that is it about traffic shaping. Otherwise, the scenario here is totally, totally the same as in the previous slide. So traffic shaping advantage uh, limits rates of different packets separately and also the buffer mechanism. The buffer mechanism can reduce bandwidth wastage and traffic retransmission. Uh, because we are not going to discard packets. The disadvantage of shipping, uh, it may increase the delay. So it's not very uh, friendly to uh, 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 delay sensitive uh, data because of the buffer. So it will obviously increase the delay. Okay. So, uh, how do we configure traffic shipping? Uh, unlike traffic policing, which is configured uh, in the inbound, so traffic policing is configured here uh, in the in the ingress uh, of the egress router. So with shipping, we configure traffic shipping on the outbound, on the outbound interface of the enterprise egress router. So shaping has to be configured here uh, to ensure bandwidth of different types of traffic and optimize bandwidth usage. Uh, so the commands to do that are here. So again, here we create a traffic behavior for each type of data. We use a command called GTS. Uh, GTS is for, in full it is, uh, Hmm. I'm, I'm forgetting something traffic, uh, something traffic shaping, shaping. I'm, I'm forgetting the G there, but you can, you can check on that. But uh, the other part of the command is very similar to what we did in traffic policing. So we use the CIR command, then specify the bandwidth uh, like that. So that is what we've done there. Then we do the same for video and we do the same for data. So we do so by configuring a traffic behavior. So during, during the lab that you're going to do just now, uh, these are some of the things that you are going to be configuring. Okay. So, uh, this is just a comparison of the advantages and disadvantages, which I think we've just looked at. Uh, uh, but we can, we can just go through them very fast. So traffic policing, it limits the rate of different types of packets and remarks packets. So that is the advantage. The disadvantage of policing causes high packet loss. And also when the link is idle, the bandwidth cannot be fully utilized. Then Traffic shipping discards fewer packets because it makes use of uh, the buffer and also makes full use of the bandwidth. Mm. The problem with traffic shipping, it causes extra delay and jitter and it also requires more device buffer resources. So it requires more resources because it needs memory, needs memory because of the buffer. So that's uh, the disadvantage uh, of traffic shipping. So that is it. This is a very short topic. Uh, anyone with a question? Before we go to do now the QoS lab. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we've already discussed this question just now. Uh, so we're not going to look at it. Asante Nisana. 